So as we're setting up, uh, it's an honor to be to close the uh, formal presentations uh, in honor of Yuda, an old colleague and, and friend. Uh, it's the one that says Pearl Tribute down there. One reason I wanted to actually just thank you. To display it, I'm kind of proud of the uh, title. Also, I wanted to uh, settle, uh, there was a question about how to pronounce Yuda's uh, name. I hope there's no more questions about that. Um, there was also uh, some uh, speculation about the relative merit of the, or importance of the three areas of Yuda's contributions. Uh, I'll just point out that there were four presentations on heuristics, five on probability, and six on causality. You do the math. Um, so my name's Yoav Shaw. I'm a computer scientist from Stanford. I uh, worked for 10 years in logic and philosophy, then for 10 years in economics and game theory. And now I'm beginning to think that, that perhaps uh, the first 10 years weren't all that bad, and I'm beginning to, 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 to work in that area again. But I, um, I, I, I speak about causation somewhat gingerly because I, I realize I know how complex the topic is and so much has happened in the last 10 years that I haven't caught up on yet, so, uh, so bear with me. Uh, what I want to speak about uh, is a general question, is uh, almost a meta discussion. Well, what are the criteria by which we evaluate some theory of, of, of causation? And um, I want to start with a panel that I, so this was UAI something. I've been to two, UAI is a conference of uncertainty in AI. I've been to two in my life. And in one of them, Yuda grabbed me and said, uh, there's a panel on, caus on causation, you're on it, let's go. And um, I remember that I presented some criteria that I thought were reasonable to put for a theory of causation. And another panelist, uh, let's call him Adam Grove, uh, said uh, that he couldn't care less. If it was a theory that was useful, that's good enough for him. And that's not a silly position to, to take, but in hindsight, I think that, in fact, it's a more serious topic that deserves conversation, and that's kind of what I want to speak about today. And I'll start by um, taking an example, uh, a paper by Yuda and Joe Halpern on actual cause. In fact, earlier today, we had a... a, a, a a discussion of uh, actual cause. Actual cause, this is the, 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 uh, the, the lightning yesterday uh, uh, caused uh, rain, or as opposed to lightning caused rain, or something like that. I'm sure it's not true what I said, but anyway. Um, <laughs> so, um, um, and I'm not actually going to speak about that theory. So there were papers, the initial one was in fact in UAI 91, then there was in a proceedings of the, I think, the Royal, the British Royal Academy, uh, a, a version of that, and it's really the basis of chapter 10 of Yuda's uh, causality book. Um, so I'm not gonna speak about the theory, but I, what I do want to speak about is how they argue on behalf of the theory. And I have a quote. It goes like this. By the way, my paper is two and a half pages long and I actually seriously thought of just reading the paper, uh, but I'm not gonna do that, but I will read this quote. While it is hard to argue that our def definition, parenthetically, or any other def definition but for that matter, is quote unquote, the right definition, we show that it deals well with the difficulties that have plagued other approaches in the past, especially those exemplified by the rather extensive compendium of, and they give a reference to a, a paper by uh, Ned Hall from 98. Um, and there's, throughout this paper, there's a strong philosophical bias. There's, so Hall is a philosopher, and uh, there's that reference. If you look at the uh, references at the end of the paper, and you take away all the references to papers by Pearl and or Halpern, uh, you end up with 13 references, and eight of those are to philosophers. Uh, and if the paper is 10 pages long, and four of those are devoted to examples and showing how the theory handled the examples in an intuitively satisfactory manner. Um, now, they didn't invent uh, this uh, way of arguing on behalf of the theory. It's a well-established philosophical tradition. So, for example, uh, when uh, Saul Kripke wanted to explain the interaction between uh, modal logics and, uh, and 
uh, uh, e uh, equality, uh, I came up with the uh, morning star, evening star example. So you may have different beliefs about the star you see in the morning uh, from those of, uh, the, about the star you see in the, in the evening, even though unbeknownst to you, they're the same star, they're Venus. Uh, good intuition. Similarly, there's a well-known, uh, this is actually not due to Gettier, but he mentions it, uh, arguing about what's a, a good model of, uh, of uh, knowledge as opposed to belief, and uh, in order to show that true belief is not a good uh, definition of knowledge, you give example of the lottery. You believe that you'll win the lottery, you win it, but that hardly qualifies as having been knowledge. There's a more elaborate uh, example that Getty, give, Getty gives to argue against the definition of uh, knowledge as being justified, true belief. Uh, by the way, I think his argument is wrong, but that's, that's neither here nor there here. Uh, so it's a well-established tradition. Um, but it's, but it, it, it poses a huge obstacle to the theorist. Uh, because what this means is all those examples are necessary but insufficient condition. Um, so imagine here you are and you want to give the, the ultimate uh, definition of causality. And there is by now a compendium of, you know, 47 examples of what could go wrong with causality. And you work and you toil for years and then at the end of your wits you crawl and you give this tome to this philosopher judge who sits there smoking a cigar and says, yeah, yeah, but in the meanwhile I've thought of another example and you're not handling it right. So uh, you can't win in this game. Now, does this make it a bad tradition? I don't think so, but it means that you're playing a certain game. Now, is this the only sort of criterion you can bring to uh, evaluating uh, an, a natural concept such as causation or knowledge or something else? The answer is, of course, no. Um, and we have uh, an example from the notion of knowledge, another philosophic, heavily discussed philosophical notion. Uh, and uh, here's an alternative approach, which half of you probably know very well, if not more, um, and that is distributed systems. So here we have a distributed system. There's nothing philosophical about it or, uh, or mysterious. You have a set of computing nodes and they follow a protocol and uh, they send messages to one another and you want to establish whether or not this protocol will culminate to some desired state. And intuitively you tend to say, well, this processor sent a message to this processor, uh, this message may not have arrived, but this processor knows that it may not have arrived, and you try to give a precise notion, this notion of no. And you define it simply to be a correlation between local state of a machine and the global state of a system. And if you've never seen this before, this doesn't make much sense, but just take it on faith that there's an uh, objective phenomenon taking place, and you're using a, 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 a fancy, a, 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 an abstraction called knowledge to reason about it. Now it turns out through some miracle that is it's exactly the same abstraction that were used by philosopher in particular, Hint, Hintika, to reason about an ideal notion of knowledge, and through you know, a compounding miracle in game theory by Alman to reasoning about information uh, in, in game theory. Uh, well, great, uh, uh, but what, what do you learn from that? Uh, you learn that you have to have a precise artifact and you have to be very clear about the set of questions you are willing to entertain about this artifact. So for example, you can reason about certain aspects of distributed systems using what happens to be the S5 logic of knowledge. But you cannot reason about cryptography because the abstraction here in S5 does not allow you to speak about computational limitations, and so on and so forth. So those are the rules of the game. They prove useful in uh, distributed systems. Do we have any other example in computer science? Here are two. And here I, so, so I call this the artifactual uh, perspective. You have an artifact and you're trying to reason about it. A special case of that is the database perspective where the artifact involves a database. And I'll give two cases of that. The one is very well known. And this is the AGM theory of belief revision. So here you have a database that captures your beliefs but it's not just a dumb database that knows how to do store and retrieve. It provides additional services. It maintains consistency for you. So you have a contract with this database. 
Here are the operations, store and retrieve. And by the way, among other things, you need to make sure that at all times you need to maintain consistency. And, and here are the rules for how you maintain consistency. And that, in a nutshell, is the AGM belief revision kind of theory. Uh, I personally recently kind of delved into theories of intention and I had a similar kind of approach to handling it. If you're familiar with the uh, Cohen and Levick seminal 1990 paper of, uh, on uh, modeling intention, um, it's in that spirit but really tries to uh, avoid a lot of the murkiness by being very hard-nosed about what is the artifact. Imagine you have a classical AI planner and it's using a database to maintain its beliefs and its intentions. And its intentions really make for the partial plan that eventually hopefully will be a complete plan, but throughout planning is not. However, they have to be the intentions at least mutually consistent and in fact consistent with beliefs. And if you're super clear about what these consistency or coherence requirements are, then you are not mystified by what the theory of intention should look like. It emanates from that. Now, does that make it irrelevant uh, to philosophy? I actually think not. I think it uh, disambiguates a lot of things that are swept under the rug in the looser discussion in some of the philosophical tradition. But of course, philosophers will have to decide that. For us as computer scientists, though, it can be a, a useful way of thinking about the notion of, uh, of intention. Um, so where does that leave us? Uh, what about uh, causality? By the way, I have, I have seven more slides and then I'm done. No, no kidding. This is my only slide. Um, <clears throat> so, so short of just having a collection of test cases and just praying that nobody will come up with a new test, is there anything else? Is there an artifactual perspective on causation that somehow we can used to resolve many of the issues that are still floating around. Well, my hope is that we have Yuda for that. So thank you, Yuda. Mazaltov.